A big question in the prostate cancer medical community has been, should you give a second generation hormone therapy to a patient who's about to start first generation hormone therapy? And this question has now been answered. Recently, the New England Journal of Medicine has come out with a study and they published the results basically studying men for five years. They took a thousand patients who had high risk recurrent disease and they split them into three different groups. The first group took a first generation hormone therapy, Lupron, as a standalone treatment, so monotherapy. The second group took the second generation hormone therapy agent as a standalone treatment, monotherapy, with enzalutamide, otherwise known as Xtandi. And the third group took a combination of both. Now, it's really a great study because it helps contextualize whether or not men should be starting on combination therapy right away. And today we're going to talk to Dr. Mark Scholes, who's a medical oncologist who's focused in only in prostate cancer for 30 years, and get his perspective. How does this affect real life treatment in this world today? So Dr. Scholes, today we're talking about hormone therapy. Now there's been a new study coming that came out in the New England Journal of Medicine back in October, and it's really comparing Lupron and enzalutamide. Can you tell us about this uh, clinical trial and then also what the outcomes are? This is a uh, what we call a randomized prospective trial. These are the highest quality clinical trials. This particular trial looked at 1,000 patients, 1,000 men, volunteers, who had developed a recurrent cancer after either surgery or radiation and their PSA was rising. They had scans. They didn't have PET scans, PSMA PET scans when they did this trial uh, because it started a number of years ago. Patients with older scans, CAT scans and bone scans, did not have any metastatic sites. They had to have the PSA rising at a reasonably brisk rate. It was doubling on average about every five months. So you're looking at consequential recurrent prostate cancer without metastasis. Historically, some of these people may have had some radiation to where the prostate used to be if they had surgery, but basically it was a situation that was extremely common prior to PSMA PET scans. And the usual policy then was to put people on hormone treatment. And this trial asks the question of what kind of hormone treatment. We have both first and second generation hormone treatments. We have the Lupron type drugs, and extandy type drugs, uh, enzalutamide, as you mentioned. And do these patients need Lupron, and then after they become resistant to Lupron a number of years later, then go on extandy? Should they be on extandy and Lupron from the get-go? Or could you just use extandy without Lupron? So this clinical trial divided these thousand men into three different groups, and monitored them over the next five years on this treatment to uh, determine uh, the incidence of developing visible metastasis uh, with an old-fashioned CAT scan or bone scan. And uh, the clinical trial uh, showed basically interesting, very clear results. I would say in general, all the men did well at five years, but if you look at the incidence of metastasis in these three different groups, Lupron alone versus Xtandi alone, the second generation medication versus Xtandi plus Lupron, the incidence of metastasis in the combination arm, which we would expect would be the lowest incidence, was 10% at five years. Shows you how well hormone treatment works. If you look at incidence of metastasis at five years with Lupron alone, it was 30%, and I'm rounding these numbers off so they're more uh, memorable. And uh, with Xtandi alone, second generation hormone therapy, uh, it was 20%. Study shows there is certainly uh, more efficacy, anti-cancer efficacy with combination therapy. There is somewhat more efficacy with second generation therapy compared to first generation therapy. It also shows that the difference is not huge. It's real. It took a thousand patients, 300 men in each arm, to see this difference, and it took five years for the results to play out. This is typical of how slowly prostate cancer moves in general. The next question, of course, would be what kind of uh, price did these patients pay by getting second generation medicines? And they are more expensive, price in terms of cost. In terms of toxicity, the toxicity wasn't that different. There were a few differences in terms of side effects, a little more fatigue in the men that were taking uh, enzalutamide. But uh, in general, you could argue that 
other than cost considerations, the use of combination therapy uh, is clearly superior, though the differences between combination therapy and Lupron alone are not dramatic, there is a difference. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that we're a nonprofit organization, and if you would like to join our cause to get these videos in front of patients all around the world, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation on hormone therapy. So when it comes to these side effects, can you run through the typical side effects that a patient on Lupron would experience? Well, fatigue is the number one problem. Uh, men who don't have testosterone tend to lose muscle mass, and this is a common accompaniment in aging men anyway. The loss of strength translates into fatigue. People get hot flashes, they lose their sex drive, they can get some depression, sometimes some uh, mild memory loss through the weakness of the situation. I think the real question is that a whole lot worse when you take second generation medications? And the answer is not really. It's not a whole lot worse. The, the toxicity of doing combination therapy is not a prominent issue in making this decision. How would you say this is going to affect real world treatments? Do you see that maybe patients would start to get second generations with first generation right away? Would this be a practice that you would, you know, take? Absolutely. Historical policy, maybe for cost reasons, was, oh, Lupron works pretty well. Let's use that up and then let's uh, embark upon second generation hormone treatment when the Lupron runs out or stops working. If people have the resources or the insurance to cover second generation treatment up front, and if they tolerate it well, remember you can try these medicines and see how you feel as an individual. And when we do these studies, we speak in generalities of what the average effect was in a large number of people. In the practical world, any specific patient can try a medicine and see how he feels if that patient has the financial resources or the insurance to cover it. All these issues are dealt on a one-to-one -one basis. I think this answers a very important question uh, as to is there a real benefit from getting on combination treatment immediately? And I think the answer unequivocally is yes, there is. When we talk about real world aspects, it's always a question of should you do you know combination therapy right away? And it sounds like from the study, if you have serious cancer and you know you're not a Gleason you know six or three plus you know four and you're gonna treat this and go on hormone therapy, it sounds like everyone who is in that you know stage, whether it's from Gleason um, seven, like high Gleason seven and onwards, really should be doing combination hormone therapy unequivocally. It just sounds like that's everyone. Do you agree with that statement? I do. Uh, we know it's the same biology. It, in this particular study, they were looking at men with relapse disease. It, was, it's, it allowed them to make direct comparisons by having a very uniform group of patients that had relapse disease. But it's all prostate cancer. So your point is well taken that there are some mild types of prostate cancer that don't even need hormone therapy or perhaps elderly people with low-grade disease. We'd use just very mild low dose hormone therapy, so to speak. But in anyone that is saying, I'm going after a cure because I judge my particular variant of prostate cancer to be potentially life-threatening someday, this study to me says that you don't want to be on monotherapy. You want to be on combination therapy uh, unless there's some strong argument against it, such as no insurance, no cost, these are expensive pills, or if after embarking upon the medicines that somehow it doesn't agree with that particular individual, you have to modify or switch to a different type of medicine. But in general, the rule of thumb now, I think, with this very clear study, is that anyone with the more serious types of prostate cancer who needs hormone therapy needs to be on combination hormone therapy. Well, this study was done with enzalutamide, known as Extandi, but there are other second generation hormone therapies and other options. You know, we have Nubeca, we have Relita, we have Zytiga, which is now a generic and cheaper. So can those be considered in the same fashion along with Lupron as the study has mentioned? Certainly not addressed in this study, but in day-to-day -day practice, the oncologists that I talk with, and in my own personal experience, the efficacy, the anti-cancer efficacy of these medicines appear to be comparable. From a treatment efficacy point of view, in my opinion, you could switch out to those other agents that you mentioned. The, uh, the cost and the side effect profiles are different amongst those medicines. And so that has to be brought into uh, consideration as well in deciding but we have to give uh, the Extandi manufacturers uh, credit. This is a very expensive study. It took many years to accomplish. It was well performed, and it gives us very useful information now for patients who are trying to decide whether they want to uh, take combination therapy or not. 
So a couple of thoughts on my conversation with Dr. Scholz. You know, not all physicians offer second generation hormone therapies right away when they're about to embark on a first generation hormone therapy. And I think it is important to have that discussion with your doctor. So we're gonna go ahead and link the study in the description below this video. Maybe they're not aware of the study, but I think it's an important topic to bring up to your doctor and to find out based on your personal case, whether or not they would advise you to go on it or not, and whether or not they offer it or not. You know, getting first and second opinions is always important. And if this is an option you're going to pursue, it's important to talk to your medical team and work with them through this uh, to make sure that you really get the best outcomes. Another thought I had is if you're already going to embark upon hormone therapy in general, the side effects um, can be severe in some cases. And if you're already going to go on a hormone therapy agent that's like Lupron in a first generation, you know, going on a second generation hormone therapy may not add a lot of um, intensity, added intensity to the first generation hormone therapy side effects. I think what's important is to really take each side effect that you're experiencing and help you know, find a mitigation plan for that. So I know that estrogen patches help with hot flashes and working out and weightlifting in hormone therapy, which we know can be quite difficult, but it really does help with fatigue issues. And even thinking about if, you know, the study was done with enzalutamide, which is known as Xtandi, but you know, Zytiga is cheaper and maybe your doctor would offer that to you. It doesn't necessarily need to be Xtandi. The combination of hormone therapies, first and second generation may work with other second generation hormone therapies, as Dr. Schultz said. So those are just a couple key factors to think about. All of this is really to help you have a better outcome when talking to your medical team. So, you know, you can take notes from this video, take the study with you, have this discussion with them, and then you can call our helpline if you have specific questions or things that you need help um, answering. They're really good with giving information, not advice. Really, the advice needs to come from your medical team. But you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline, and they can help you from there. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We found out that 70% of the people who watch our videos do not subscribe, and we want to get that rate up. So please subscribe to our channel. What it does is it basically YouTube will push these types of videos out to people who are searching for answers in prostate cancer, and we want to help them. So by you subscribing, you're joining our cause to help patients all around the world who have prostate cancer issues. I hope you have a great week. Please remember, most importantly, you're not alone.